All right, you two. <clears throat> this here is uh, my onboard air setup. Uh, this is a 79 Ford F-150, heavily modified. But um, this is a York 210 air compressor um, that I've converted to just pump air instead of uh, pump Freon. There's a York. 210 and its stock location right there um, and that one is for pumping Freon uh, but I wanted air conditioning so I had to build this other bracket here and I'm running both air compressors off the same belt and I use this bracket over here to tension the belt uh, you can see those slots down there actually you can't see them but they're down there and um, this York bolts to those in those slots, and by tightening up these some bolts on the side over here, actually they're studs, you can tension the belt. Um, so right here, uh, this is kind of the cheating way to do it. Not not cheating, but the the redneck poor man's way. Um, right here is just the the two factory fittings that come on it, and Kilby makes an adapter for this. But, um, what I did is I just got a piece of heater hose that fit it close and hose clamped it. And I put a uh, K&N air filter right here on the end. And that was easy enough. That's self-explanatory. I just slid it over the threads. And over here, um, this is, um, a special thread for air conditioning. But what I did is, um, I just took a uh, half inch bushing brass bushing and teflon taped up the threads good and I tightened it on there and i haven't had any problems with this yet uh i've had this compressor on here for years and that's never been a problem the threads don't exactly match they're the same pitch but this one's tapered where this one is not so that works and then i got a uh, check valve right here a 3h check valve and um that keeps the air from back flowing into the compressor once um, once it's the compressor is done airing, uh, pressurizing the system. And you'll notice there's no unloader valve. Normally that would go on this side of the check valve. An unloader valve, once it builds up to, pre uh, the system builds up to pressure, uh, whenever the pressure switch turns off, it flips another, uh, little lever, which opens up a small port right here on this check valve which unloads the uh, which takes the depressurizes this so the compressor can start up easier and you don't have head pressure um, I did a, I used to run that but I did away with mine um, so I hope that's not going to cause any problems with me I'm running a sealed pressure switch right here you can see I should have made these uh, disconnectable but I didn't have any um, so I just but that's no problem. I can always go back and do that. But this one cuts off at 145 and back on at 110. Uh, or at least that's what it says on the switch. It actually cuts off about 130 and back on at 90. So that works good for me. And then uh, I made this little air manifold just out of uh, different fittings. That's a cross and this is of course is a T. That vinyl tubing right there goes, or uh, polyurethane tubing or whatever it is goes into the cab to a, a gauge I have so I can monitor air pressure in the cab. Um, that small red hose right there goes to an outlet at the front which I'll show you in a second and this big half inch air hose goes all the way to the back in the bed where I keep the tank. So I think that covers everything right here under the hood. Now right here now, I just did this today. I don't really like this setup, but but right here I can pull this out. This is a little, another cross, and my air line comes in here, and I can um, plug in the air here if I so wish. And that is my pop-off valve for the system. It's 150 PSI pop-off valve. And um, I really need to mount this, but for right now, it'll do. Now, we'll go around here. I'll give you a shot of the truck in case y'all haven't seen it before.
If you live in the South, air conditioning's a must. So that's why I had to do such a crazy setup with my with my York. Now right there is the pressure gauge. You can see it's under pressure right now. Here's my in cap switch to turn on my air compressor. All right, if we go to the back here, let me climb up. We'll find uh, my air tank. Now, I used to have this mounted under my cab, but I've since rerouted my exhaust and now that and that got in the way. So, now I have it mounted here. But the air line comes up through the bed. And you can see it's protected by a, a piece of rubber hose there. And it goes up. And I might reroute that just to make it a little more aesthetically pleasing, but I think that'll do the job for now. And of course it goes into the tank. I chose half inch hose so there wouldn't uh, be uh, as much restriction and it's not that much more expensive okay right here you'll notice I used a PVC uh, I used PVC and uh, no I didn't do that because I'm cheap I did that to prevent galvanic, corro galvanic corrosion which is when two dissimilar metals um, are in close contact they will corrode each other or namely the less noble metal will corrode uh, we won't go into that that's kind of uh, chemistry lesson, I guess. But uh, when you use plastic like this, it uh, it eliminates that problem. So that's why there's PVC tees there. In the bottom, I've got a, a drain valve to drain the uh, water out if it gets water. And right here, I've got a quarter inch outlet that's just temporarily in here uh, to quick disconnect. I may end up running another line to the rear of my truck. So that's that. Uh, let's see, this is, um, and, um, uh, I may do an update on what I end up doing here, but you'll notice I just talked about that galvanic corrosion, and here I've got brass screwed into steel, so, eh, it is what it is. It'll, it, <laughs> if you got it wrapped with Teflon tape good, and it shouldn't be a problem. But anyway, that's my air setup. This is part one of, um, most likely a two-part video. So um, check out my second video and you can see um, a d demonstration of the system.